everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And welcome to the Citizen Channel and another episode. This is episode three of the City Book Club, where we have a look at uh, a City Book from either a player or someone connected with the club or obviously someone writing about the club. And this, this week, we're going to have a look at. Um, well, there you've seen it on the thumbnail, haven't you? We're going to have a look at Mr. Dennis Stewart, My Football Journey, another great book, uh, forward by Carlos Alberto, for you younger guys out there. I think it was something to do with uh, Brazil, and obviously he was uh, obviously involved with Dennis when he, he was over in the US playing playing football. So, yeah, we're going to have a look at Dennis Stewart, My Football Journey today. Uh, he was, But we're going to look at the sort of, not his football inside, but obviously when he was a director at City. And we, today we're going to sort of start at the end, if you like. We're going to have a look, because we don't do these in particular order. We delve in and look at certain things. We're going to look at Chapter 17, which is literally his next to final chapter. All, all that's after that is the epilogue of his, of his book. So we're going to look at Chapter 17 as his directorship comes to a... A somewhat inglorious end, unfortunately. And so we're going to go back to the year two thousand and seven. So that's not too long ago, is it? Not as not as long ago as uh, some of these things we do. So please join me as it was. We have a look at that anyway. Please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button. Push the bell notification if you enjoy what we do. I try and put loads of city stuff out there. Of course, city past, city present, city quizzes, city book clubs. There's even going to be a city movie club at some stage as well. Stuff like that. So, if you do enjoy different things, as they say, if one thing doesn't appeal to you, I'm sure something else will. So, uh, please check out all my city stuff. And of course, if you do check the playlist, there's some. Uh, I'm a little bit greedy. I have a film and TV channel as well. Where I do love film and TV, so I do movie reviews, TV drama reviews, information vlogs on films and TV. TV, etc. Uh, even quizzes on there as well, film quizzes, etc. So film film poster specials, lots of stuff. So if that's of any interest, have a flit over there if you want a little rest from football sometimes. Or you do know someone who might be interested, please point them in my direction. I'll be very grateful. And if you're after any friends or followers on Facebook and Twitter, do check out uh, the links on screen there. And if you follow a friend me, I do check every three or four days and follow and friend everyone back. And of course, I post loads of stuff on Twitter and Facebook so and repost stuff for people of, of any interest so, uh, to do with City and, and Film and TV, basically. So do that. Any comments on this on Dennis Stewart? I mean, obviously, he's a big hero of mine. Obviously, I've got a lot of... Uh, heroes from the 60s and 70s but obviously Dennis Stewart sort of uh, went past that didn't he went 70s and perhaps 80s and even as a director he was, he was sort of uh, trying to help the club out wasn't he so yeah any comments to make any of you met the gentleman I have actually done a question and answer with him at a supporters club meeting once but uh, where I got the book from actually and got it signed etc but uh, yeah, so if, if you've any any real things you want to remember about Dennis, uh, just let me know. And if you can't leave a comment today, just just give us a little thumbs up. It's nice, it's nice to get views, but it's nice to get thumbs up as well. Anyway, let's get on with this. Let's get on with this uh, football uh, citizen channel vlog about uh, Dennis Stewart, my football journey. Yeah, we'll start with uh, chapter seventeen. It's called Take Over and Out. Yeah. Uh, Francis Lee. Yeah, we can mention Francis Lee had relinquished chairmanship. Almost nine years previously uh, to this, uh, in 2007, but he was still a shareholder at City, so he still sort of had an influence. And I think uh, Mr. Stewart had uh, sort of, although he got an, in early days, he had a good relationship. I think that had uh, sort of faded over time, unfortunately. Uh, but obviously Francis Lee was still uh, still involved and he contacted the then chairman John Wardle. Yeah, Mr John Wardle, he put a lot of money into the club, didn't he? Suggesting City should sign up with a, with a firm called Galileo. There you go, and it's not the song, not the Queen's song, and that was a, an American hedge fund company and an agent uh, called Jerome Anderson, who will feature in a little while as well, but an agent obviously... Jerome Anderson, who would then tout the club around, go and try and hawk us out to the highest bidder around the United States uh, to try and get a buyer for the club because we still needed a lot of uh, financial input. Obviously, obviously, we moved to the Etihad then. We've been there for three or four years, obviously, but uh, we still need we still needed that uh, financial backing. Uh, but yeah, Stuart and the board, or the board and Stuart, uh, 
we're not overly impressed with this idea and uh, unanimously unanimously opposed this proposal so uh Chua added Chua added in his book he just goes on to say the force of francis having any kind of say in the sale of city disappointed me given his previous poor record at the club during his time as chairman the fact that he was still a business associate associate of jerome anderson concerned me even more when i'd first taken my place on the board i'd queried a regular monthly payment going to anderson who had a close relationship with lee because i didn't believe agents should have exclusive arrangements with clubs it was an eye-opener for me to see all the gray suits jockeying for position during this period as the real football issues became secondary it was all about profits and egos rather than sorting out the future of the academy or city's grassroots policy the things that really mattered yeah i mean uh, obviously we'll touch upon it later but that was what sort of dennis Stewart was involved in that side of it's getting funds for the academy and that sort of thing so and obviously this this all all these other things were going on in the meantime was, obviously dennis Stewart was looking more perhaps to the future as well so uh carrying on from that yeah at the same time there was a, a few off-field shenanigans uh people like joey barton was sort of uh, helping team morale of course, on the pitch by fighting with Usmane Dabo. Remember him, Usmane Dabo, after training in one session. So these things are happening. I think he's one of his friends, his old friends, who's not obviously didn't have a great time at City, but Mr. Alan Ball had passed away recently as well. So all these all these other things were going off. City had actually reached the FA Cup quarterfinals at this stage. We'd actually progressed to the quarterfinals and we were drawn away at Blackburn Rovers. Unfortunately, we wouldn't get much further, but at least progressed to the quarterfinals. But we were struggling a bit in the Premier League. We'd, we sort of been in and around 13, 14, 15 spots, something like that, while all this was going on. Then it sort of went quiet once the, once the board had blocked that move. Then in April 2007, yeah, uh, a certain fax in Shinawatra uh, via an agent called Seymour Pierce had approached City. Uh, it already failed to in bids for Fulham and Liverpool. So, I mean, there's no, no love for City. It was just the fact he was trying to get his hands on a football club, wasn't it? And uh, City's board's financial guys, I mean, Dennis Stewart was not too sure himself, but the board's financial guys, uh, despite uh, taxing's outstanding corruption charges in, in, his, in his home country, he was obviously uh, uh, not living there. He was obviously going to get in trouble if he went back there. So, yeah, he was, he was facing corruption charges in Thailand. Uh, despite all this, uh, apparently the, the people who knew a little about the money side of things were quite happy with this. And even the FA, who do this... Uh, you know, this uh, look into these people, whether they're actually right and proper. Uh, the FA Premier League had also raised no objections to this move by taxing Shinawatra. I mean, at the same time, you also had, and I think he's been involved in clubs like Coventry since and places like that, not overly wonderfully, or not, not very successfully, mind you, but... Uh, of course, uh, a, a good player for City, Ray Ranson, had also uh, put together a consortium uh, to actually uh, invest in the club, but that had also been blocked by the board as well. Uh, Stuart actually shared his thoughts on uh, Shinoata in, in the book. He goes on to say, I had a conflict of interest about Thaksin taking over. Aside from the human rights concerns, uh, he'd already tried to take over Liverpool and Fulham, so it did bother me that he might not have City's best interests at heart. As for fit and proper person aspects, I was aware of what was being rumoured about his actions in Thailand. I won't say that I felt especially comfortable about it, not really, but sometimes you have to be guided on these things. The Premier League and British government deemed him fit and proper person. My my financial colleagues on the board also believe the takeover would be good for the club. I'm not bigger than any of those. I went with the decision in the interests of City. It was difficult, but I made a business decision. It was alarming then to discover that Thaksin's football advisor was Jerome Anderson again. With this decision, Anderson was now a central part of the bid. And that didn't sit comfortably with me at all. But the club needed investment and that was the most important issue. The team ethic that we had in my early years on the board uh, in, on the board was falling apart. We'd always said we were custodians of the club, but now I feared it was turning into what's in it for me scenario. So yeah, you could sort of sense obviously that the, the togetherness of the board was beginning to fracture at certain, at certain stages. Uh, he went on to say that uh, if the deal was approved by the board, he knew City, 
needed that investment of course he would so he would be quite happy if needed or asked to to stand down uh, from his directorship if unneeded knowing he'd made a solid contribution so he's willing to do that knowing he'd made a, made a, a solid contribution in his his time as a director uh, there was some problems obviously around Shino Atta we've also we've mentioned those lead, those problems in his own tr uh, corruption problems in Thailand but obviously his assets were frozen as well so obviously as far as releasing money to buy to buy into city or by city it was a, a bit touch and go but on the 21st of june 2007 he actually took over city with a bid of 81.7 million he wouldn't get much of city now with that sort of money would he 81.7 million pounds but Stewart, though, had, uh, 24 hours earlier, had an abrupt end to his involvement uh, just 24 hours before this. Uh, he said, I was in the production studio with a conference client going through his visuals when my secretary rang me. She said I had a few emails and one of them was from was my resignation letter from Manchester City. I was stunned. I'd known things were moving behind the scenes with the takeover, of course, and I'd felt the grey suits wheeling and dealing, but I'd never thought it would come to this not so suddenly so abruptly with no warning no consultation it didn't seem quite real hearing the news like that I thought back to the game I'd seen at this last game I'd seen at the stadium a derby match against United a 1-0 defeat very depressing that was confirmed them as champions but before that disappointment there had been a real moment to remember we'd issued 44,000 blue and white scarves to fans have you still got yours uh, before kickoff they'd all been on their feet spinning them above their heads and singing blue moon there was a real sense of passion and commitment and even though we'd only just avoided relegation well I think we finished 13 so it wasn't it wasn't too bad I've been reminded of the move before the first game at the stadium back in 2003 yes I was there that one when we played Barcelona that was only a friendly but when I looked around the banks of blue and white shirts that day I'd had real insight into a com and confirmation of what I knew was possible for the club after all the difficulties we've been through this has given me the same feeling that same sense of a club about to explode the maneuvering of the grey suits made me uneasy but I could understand why investors would be interested this was my club Manchester City yeah so there you go uh, his secretary uh, forwarded that resignation or his own resignation letter to him which he'd never seen a, a pretty standard one by all accounts uh, no personalization or anything or no thanks for what you've done for the club etc etc uh, and an offered three months uh, severance pay which amounted to about seven thousand five hundred pound i'd love to earn that in three months so i won't, I won't mind that at the moment uh, yeah the ceo alistair mcintosh at the time had previously promised you that if he did want to remain after the takeover, he could present his case. Uh, say he was involved in the in the academy side, etc. Uh, present his case, and indeed, Stuart had been putting together. Dennis Stewart had been putting together some facts and figures and plans for investment, etc. For keeping the youth development side of the club progressing uh, through the academy. But uh, he he did say in the book that he actually just ended up in a drawer. He didn't even have a chance to uh, to use this or show this. To say he didn't he didn't even get the option. It was it was sort of to, asked to resign. Uh, even before he even had a chance of uh, putting his case to stay on he did confront McIntosh on the phone but obviously McIntosh was a little embarrassed and obviously Dennis Stewart gave him a little bit of a mouthful on the phone uh, but he was more angry as well because none of his colleagues on the board at the time you know obviously colleagues he'd been quite close to as well had had the courage to tell him what had been happening behind the scenes because this wasn't just one guy's decision this was, this was obviously a few a few more on the board uh, and he, at that stage he just decided he wanted out of it all he wanted he just wanted out of City because of the way things had been going on. So he was waiting for some legal documents to be couriered around so he, he could sign them and be done with it, as he, as he says in the book. In fact, the lawyer who turned up at his house uh, with the paperwork was, yes, in a grey suit, he said. So there you go, the men in the grey suit got, got the way. Uh, he goes on to say, A few days later, I bumped into John Wardle when I was 
going to collect my tickets for a Rod Stewart concert. There you go at Main Road. Uh, I laid that uh, Etihad, not Main Road. I laid into him for not contacting me personally and said that I felt very let down. He became very humble, apologised to me, and then invited Joan and I to join him in his executive box any time we wanted. Brian Bodek called me. That's one of the other. I think he was sort of more the lawyer, legal side of it, lawyer, the lawyer side of it. Called me after a week of silence, and I said to him, "Oh, hello, stranger," because obviously he's one of these guys who's not been in touch with uh, Dennis Stewart uh, he, he'd retained a position at the club uh, when John when John David Bernstein and I had agreed John Wardle, David Bernstein and I had agreed that Francis Lee would leave back in 1998 we decided to let him go with dignity not because of his record as a chairman but justifiably for what he had achieved as a player I wasn't even allowed to do that says Dennis Stewart the grey suits had won and in fact, uh, before the following season, City had a, a friendly with Valencia. Uh, was it v Valencia? Um, before, and obviously he took up the offer of the tickets, but he ended up where they, they were actually not tickets for the director's box, just as part of the main stand, and he was a bit upset about that. And, he, and the club tried to uh, put a little bit of a wedge between Dennis Stewart and the fans, and he said it's nothing to do with the fact he was with the fans. That was that was by the by. It was just the way they did things. So, uh, yeah, there was a couple of couple of leaked things to the newspapers saying that obviously Stewart had refused to sit in the stand with the fans, you know, and all this sort of thing. But I said, that that wasn't the point. And Dennis Stewart, and no no way had any any sort of. Um, fallout with the fans and actually I think through the Manchester Evening News had published a letter uh, thanking them etc etc for the for the time it was there so there you go just a little bit of an insight there into Mr Dennis Chew of course we'll be looking back on this book and looking perhaps at his some of his playing stuff as well but I thought well we'll have a look at the uh, directorous director side of these things obviously there's always two sides to every tale isn't there so but there you go that's mr dennis stewart's version of what happened and we have no reason not to believe not to believe anything he said the book's been out for a while now so i don't think there's any uh any comeback or or uh obviously any any lawsuit saying he's lying or anything like that which you obviously bound to get aren't you because as i say people do have uh different views of things but it was great to look at uh because let's face it, he's, he's still a still a hero to us even now, isn't he? And I think he's still obviously connected and does does the things for City on uh, the media, etc. Dennis Stewart. So it's it's just good to see, just to delve into his book and have a quick look at that side of it. As I said, I'm sure we'll be looking at the the player side of uh, Dennis Stewart as well in in this book over the coming months, years, however long we're going to do these little book clubs, if you like them. Anyway, hope, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know anyway. I'd say any any special memories you've got of uh, Dennis Stewart. And thanks for joining me for this. Uh, City Book Club Episode 3 Dennis Stewart My Football Journey Also please check out Episode 1 Which uh, featured Mike Doyle uh, Manchester City My Team And of course Episode 2 featured Joe Mercer And Gary James Who obviously was involved in that book uh, Football with a Smile So Del for them Hope you enjoyed that Whatever you're going to do with this day Have a great one Look after yourselves Look after your friends Look after your families More importantly Let's all look after each other To meet here again On the Citizen Channel On the Book Club Or any other thing we do On the Citizen Channel Please uh, You look after yourselves Stay safe Blues That's all I ever ask of you Thanks for watching Bye for now